Praise God. I am <clears throat> um, going to the book of um, Second Chronicles, the uh, 35th chapter. Uh, this is one of the uh, renderings of the story of Josiah. And this, um, how can I say, there was a, uh, a return to the Lord because of things that had been lost over time uh, due to neglect of um, the Lord's uh, temple and due to the neglect of uh, serving the Lord. Uh, it is interesting that when you study history and you study biblical history, how quick uh, humanity can seem to uh, lose total focus and forget who the Lord is and begin to um, uh, pretty much uh, change the concept who God is. And again, we, we see that detail by Paul in the book of Romans. Um, and uh, he talks about how mankind uh, seemed to be quick to um, turn away from the Lord. But if we go back to, um, uh, uh, if we go back to Genesis and, and we see uh, the flood and uh, we see the, uh, you know, these eight souls, uh, it's not, you know, a whole lot of time until we find, uh, you know, mankind multiplying on the earth. And uh, we have a tower of Babel, and they have a, uh, a man named Nimrod who has um, <clears throat> uh, become uh, their how can I say, uh, religious and um, uh, governmental ruler. And, uh, and a lot of things have been uncovered in archaeology in the, in the fast, past several years. But, you know, uh, what they have found and what they believe is the ziggurat that um, was built, they found um, you know, a temple complex uh, beside it. So, you know, there was worship going on, but just uh, they have gotten sidetracked and uh, man was trying to become, uh, uh, raise himself up in a way that he shouldn't have. Um, I, I'm saying all this that Again, Josiah's time wasn't far removed from, uh, you know, uh, how can I say, great moves of God and, and the kings of uh, Judah that uh, how that they were serving the Lord and how it just took really just uh, one king to come along and to sidetrack and then um, and then just have this up and down roller coaster uh, leadership of kings um, and which caused uh, them to lose a lot. And of course there was um, high places and other places to worship. But I wanna pick up here in the first um, uh, verse, and um, we're going to read down to verse two. It says, then, uh, then, and I'm going to read this in the NLT, then uh, Josiah announced that the Passover of the Lord would be celebrated in Jerusalem, and so the Passover lamb was slaughtered on the 14th day of the first month. 
Jos Josiah also uh, assigned the priest to their duties and encouraged them uh, in their work uh, at the temple of the Lord. Uh, my subject here um, is encouraged. Okay, we're going to uh, look at this and I'm going to um, uh, go through this in a very simple way. But encouraged is, is, is a, you know, is a good word. Uh, we, uh, we use it uh, mostly as uh, positively, but there is those who have been uh, encouraged to do wrong. And, uh, but uh, here we find it is um, something that is positive here with King Josiah and, and the, um, the children of, of God, uh, the people of Judah. Uh, if we, you know, if we look at this story, um, again, uh, we find people just kind of, uh, you know, forgetting what's going on. Uh, in Second Chronicles here, um, uh, the previous chapter, um, we find that it states here that Josiah was around eight years old. In other words, when he became recognized. So as a, as a king, it really wasn't until he was 18 years old until he uh, really kind of uh, took the uh, the reins of this, um, and <clears throat> it was, uh, okay, uh, it, it was during his, his reign, um, and we find the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, Josiah began to seek God of his ancestor David. Then in the twelfth uh, year, he began to purify Judah and Jerusalem um, and destroying all uh, the pagan shrines uh, and Asherah poles and uh, the carved idols and cast idols. Uh, he ordered that the altars of Baal be demolished uh, and the incense altars which stood uh, above them to be broken down. Uh, he also made sure that the Asherah uh, poles, the carved idols and the uh, cast images were smashed and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. Uh, he burned the bones of the pagan priest on their own altars. And also he purified Judah and Jerusalem. Okay. It, it seems that, you know, uh, we see a, uh, a great, and really by this description, we, we find out that people uh, fell away from uh, where they were previously. You say, well, you know, we don't, um, you know, we don't worship those things. Uh, anymore, and we don't worship those idols and and uh, all these things. But uh, you know, if we would uh, look at what these idols stood for and all these different things, I, I would say that um, you know, uh, many times we do, uh, and we do it by our actions and by the things that we um, we allow into our lives. 
and how that uh, we uh, conduct ourselves on a daily basis. Uh, this is, you know, this has always been the struggle of the church, and this has been the struggle of the people of God uh, since the beginning. Why? Because uh, sin <clears throat> has really caused a rift in our world. Sin has really just kind of, uh, you know, uh, done, done a number. You know, none of this stuff, uh, you know, came just overnight, and they were doing this. It uh, it, it increased. There was cracks left open uh, uh, in uh, in Judah. There was there was high places that were allowed, and uh, even uh, uh, we we find it in Solomon's time uh, in his latter years, due to uh, the uh, wives, uh, according to scripture, and. Uh, and the gods of the nations that he married these women uh, to, to form alliances, uh, peaceful alliances with uh, other, um, you know, nation, tribes, and states that were apart uh, and were surrounding uh, uh, Israel at that time. Uh, but this was this was entering in before that, and so what we uh, what we allow, we find the children of Israel when they are traveling, and what we were studying, and we'll get back to. But uh, what we were studying about numbers matters. But what we find out that you know, in forty days. Um, when, you know, Moses was on Mount Sinai and he is uh, communing with God and uh, there is these tablets of stone that the Lord is giving and all this stuff is, um, you know, happening right next door to them. And you know, the cloud of God is up there and all this stuff, but within that portion of time, they, they go from uh, worshiping God to making an idol and uh, practicing uh, perversion, okay, uh, in front of this idol, okay, and uh, and this has, you know, this has been the plague of mankind. There has been many I have seen over the years that, that come from a great powerful service and where the power of God's moving and, and, and the Holy Ghost is just all over the place. And, you know, the, the move, move of God is and, and people are brought to conviction and people are, you know, and, and they're speaking in tongues and all this kind of stuff. And one day later, you know, they're committing adultery and fornication with just a day later. And I have seen this over the years and, uh, and uh, it is, it is, the human condition, the, you know, once we've had that thrill of the Holy Ghost, the, sometimes to just sit back and, and uh, uh, you know, just allow the flesh, because there is a thrill that comes to us through the Spirit and into our flesh, okay, but if we are not careful, we will want to continue that good feeling, but in the flesh, not in the spirit. And then this leads to, uh, to various sins that bring pleasure. Uh, many times, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, alcohol, drugs, or some sort of perversion that 
grabs a hold of uh, the uh, the individual's life and individuals are in in just twenty four hours of time. Sometimes it's even less. It is it is amazing what we uh, the wrong that we can do as humans so quickly so quickly can we be discouraged so quickly we can be uh you know influenced to do the wrong thing to say the wrong thing okay and to have the wrong attitude so quickly that can happen to us and especially in this day and hour you know if we believe that we are living close uh to the coming of the lord uh and and i think most of us have that perspective uh due to all the junk that uh has entered into our world uh not just uh you know here in the united states but uh throughout the whole world and all the stuff that's going on in the you know we have pretty much come to the idea that man we're we're close but we know through the scripture that the enemy okay the uh you know uh that satan okay is going to how can i say knowing his time is short he is going to increase uh his bombardment and his attack on the people of god on the church and to increase the evil and its evil's influence on everyday society i have seen people that have known the power of god and experienced it and had conviction to do the right things but when it it came down to the to the place that you know they got sidetracked along the way and and now there's they are in such an opposite camp in their way of thinking in their way of conduct and in their morality as a whole it is there is a need to be encouraged in this day that we um you know we live in uh i'm going to go in and we're just going to look at um this word that is is used for encouragement uh for encouraged excuse me in um in the hebrew um it is it is something that i think uh uh we should um you know study the bible and and look at things you know a bit in detail as much as we can uh you know especially in this day when there is how can i say so many voices saying things that may be a just a a little bit of truth in it but you know it goes off into a a world of uh of how can i say uh hypocrisy it goes off in in, in a world of heresy um it, it is all these things kind of um you know many times are, are brought brought up uh, i mean the, the stuff that's on uh youtube about um 
the Bible, these documentaries and all these different things, you know, some of these things are just, you know, uh, plain craziness. But there is a lot of people out there that are um, just adopting it. They'll read a scripture and they'll just take it so far out of, you know, <laughs> its world and its meaning that, you know, to align, you know, uh, that portion of scripture to some uh, heresy that, uh, you know, that, you know, proves that they are okay the way that they, uh, that they are interpreting this. And, you know, and it, it is, it has caused many people that look at these things who are looking for excuses i'm telling you there is plenty out there that has uh that is in our world today to give them a you know huge excuse um and you know but uh, like was told to me uh, uh, years ago, uh, <laughs> uh, Sister S.G. Norris used to always say, you know, excuses are usually a uh, lie covered with the skin of the truth. And, you know, there be a very thin skin <laughs> okay uh, and I, I would have to say that um there's a lot of truth in in that saying that <clears throat> she used to frequently <laughs> uh bring up and um i it's uh it's it's something that uh, you know our world has made a lot of excuses uh for us today to for us to live you know you know half in and half out of the church Okay, and there's a lot of stuff out there that we have to be very, very uh, careful about because uh, many of these things are excuses. They're, they have no real reason to it. If there is, it's a very thin skin. And so... Uh, and it is, and since it's very thin skinned, <laughs> it's easily deflated. Okay. Uh, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, so let's look at this word of courage. All right. Uh, the uh, Hebrew word here. And I'm going to read off uh, some of the definitions. Um, basically, we have here Roman um, number one, and uh, it says to strengthen, prevail, harden, be strong, become strong, be courageous, be firm. Grow firm, be resolute, uh, be sore. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Um, when we look at uh, some of the statements that go be uh, that are underneath this definition, okay, it is to be strong, grow strong, to prevail, to prevail upon, to be firm, to be caught 
fast, to be secure. Wow. When he said encouraged, this is, this is the meaning here. A lot of times we, we think encouragement is, you know, something like what the, you know, the cheerleader crowd does or the coach on the sideline uh, during a, a football game is, you know, go, 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 you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, that has something to do with uh, encouraging somebody to uh, to keep going, and and there is, and and you know, there is some. How can I say, uh, lifting of a person's spirit who is on the field making that play that changes the course of the game when he's hearing all that cheering and when he's hearing you know uh the coach on the sidelines you know you know telling them to, to keep it up you got it you know all this kind of stuff this is uh this can lift your spirits but what we find here is uh it goes a little bit deeper than that Okay. In fact, in, encouragement is uh, seems to be a lot that which is done in practice <laughs> with the uh, different practicing of plays, and you know, uh, uh, moving the ram, you know, with the, with the shoulder, and uh, you know, going into. Uh, the classroom and and going over the plays and and you know discussion and going over the places where the person done wrong and how they can shore that up. We you know we find uh, things that uh, are almost athletic in its nature in the in its words that we find here in courage. Uh, that doesn't, you know, uh, that doesn't surprise me when uh, when I look at this because, uh, you know, the Lord's not superficial. I mean, uh, you know, us as humanity, we're, we're fine with superficial, but God isn't. You know, He, he never was, and and uh, you know. And, and this was the, you know, problem with the Pharisees when, when we look in the scripture. They were superficial. It was, uh, and, and this very, this very how can I say, uh, concept of their religious practice being so superficial uh, uh, angered the Lord, okay? And uh, it, you know, it, it made him, uh, you know, get pretty, how can I say, um, uh, strong in his uh, demeanor and what he had to say. I mean, uh, you know, he begins to call them scribes, Pharisees, okay, uh, <laughs> hypocrites. I mean, he's, he's equating them with that and when the culture is saying no these these are the religious gurus these are the people that we we try to emulate and in other words try to act like try to be like try to be just like them that's the way we're supposed to be you know and that's what they hear constantly and basically that's coming from that group Okay, but many of them are seeing the superficial. They're not seeing what's going on, you know, at other times and elsewhere. So to grow stout, to grow rigid, to grow hard, okay, um, in other words, to strengthen, there is, there is uh, some... Um, uh, things that we need to understand here. Again, let's, 
uh, here's some more uh, statements that go along with this. To make strong, to restore to strength, give strength, to strengthen, sustain, and the word encourage. Wow, strengthen, sustain, sustain. <laughs> That sometimes is a really big word, sustain. Um, that, uh, that there is spelled W-O-R-K, <laughs> okay, and, and capitalized and, you know, and <laughs> italicized and emboldened, if you get my meaning here, sustain, okay? Okay, to make strong, make bold, encourage. To make firm, to make rigid. Again, to make hard. In other words, you're not going to move from this word encourage. And what was it encouraged to, to do what the word of the Lord and to do the service that the law and the scripture had and you know, has given them to do once they uncovered this law and found out that they were not doing this correctly. This this thing, you know, there had to be a, a time of repentance, and, and repentance is is basically again is changing direction, changing the way you think, and then changing direction. There's there's a lot of people that will change direction, but they won't change the way they think. They change direction because, you know, it's the thing to do or it's the thing that they've been told to do. But their mindset hasn't changed. Okay. Well, that's not repentance. And it's in what repentance means. It, it means not just changing uh, direction and, and doing something they're supposed to do. It is a change of heart. We make excuses a lot for where our heart is. And once, you know, there is, how can I say? Once that fiddle's been played, it seems not to stop. In other words, you know, this excuses and all these different things, it's a, it's a fiddle that seems to only get louder and, and then there's other fiddles that join in and it seems to turn into a loud noise and it becomes the spirit of a group. Okay, how do I know this? Well, here again, we find it happening to Josiah's time. And by the time Josiah is getting in to his rulership and, and he wants to re return uh, to uh, the concepts and uh, how can I say, he, he wants to have a, a, a David, okay, um, you know, godliness about him when David was doing the right things. And he wanted to return to this, and he wanted to uh, to see the people of God, the people of Judah, uh, 
you know, back in this, but uh, he was struggling in how do we do this? And the reason he's struggling is because some things have been neglected. You know, we can neglect a lot of things when it comes to our walk with God. We can neglect our, our how can I say, our guarding, our spirits, our, our mouths. You know, what, what we say, again, what we do, what we take in, what we, uh, what we look at, what we read, what we listen to, you know, um, if, if you're going to, if you're going to listen to stuff that encourages you to, uh, to sin and, uh, and you feed on this, you know, eventually you're going to be that. And it doesn't take a long time to transition to that. Okay. In fact, it, it, it can just be a few hours. And uh, as I have seen over the years, you know, it's, it's terrible uh to have this happen but we are attacked like this our humanity is vulnerable our flesh as paul put it is vulnerable to this it's it's vulnerable to just going the wrong direction I mean, when we read Romans chapter six and we read it in full, we, and actually if you go to chapter six and then you read chapter seven, I mean, uh, I mean, if that's all you wrote, I mean, read of the book of Romans, you might be on a little bit on the discouraged side. Okay. But, uh, there's there's more to it than this and 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 paul you know gives the answer uh to to chapters six and seven uh in chapter eight and that we're not you know uh that there is the spirit there is that uh, <laughs> that kinship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ, that kinship that we have with Him, that kinship that that you and me can have, and that you and me can participate, that we can have in in the move of God. When you know when we begin to worship the Lord, and 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 we begin. Uh, to to listen in songs and and begin to sing along with those songs that give praise to the Lord and 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 how can I say magnify the the Lord and who He is and and how He can transform us those things, my friend, are the actual ways that you make strong that you sustain okay that you embolden yourself okay these are the things in prayer and in, into the scripture that that we find that the lord many times will chastise us but there is encouragement also uh in his word okay we need to be told. We need, you know, uh, we need this in, in, in the Word of God. We we need to uh, be corrected. And and today there's this there's just this spirit that's in our world that says, "Listen, I am not going to allow this." Great, I'm not, you know. Uh, 
I can't be corrected. You know, I'm not a child. Well, we are children of the Lord, my friend, whether you like it or not. And the scripture lets us know, this is for all ages. The Lord chastises those whom he loves. In other words, he spanks, he gets a little rough. He tells us where we're wrong. The message that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and we often look at uh, you know, the results, and, and we're looking at the upper room and people speaking in tongues and, you know, uh, things spilling out into the street and miracles begin to happen all over the place and the, and the church begins to grow. But if you look at that message that Peter preached, it wasn't a very pleasant message. He's condemning these people he is tell them they have rejected they they have done uh, according to the jewish way of thinking he was basically accusing them of the most heinous sin and crime against god that ever could be committed and he drives it in <laughs> yeah we don't look at that because we don't want real encouragement we just want the facade of it means to rep uh, to repair means to have or take or keep hold of to strengthen oneself to put forth strength the whole idea of strength is pushing against we push every time we we move around get out of a chair do anything we are pushing against gravity if we uh, allow our muscles to do to not moving or if we would allow ourselves to be bedridden for a long period of time. We know that, okay, uh, many of you may have experienced it through sicknesses or being in a hospital, but uh, your, uh, your limbs, your, uh, your legs begin to lose muscle mass in other words, where you had strength before, there is none. And when it comes to, you know, trying to uh, do the things that you did before, there's no strength. So the whole idea of strength is, is pushing against what's pulling you back. But again, everybody wants it so easy. They don't want true encouragement. They want it handed to them on a, on a silk pillow. And it's not, you know, the Lord's always been more than that and deeper than that. It means to withstand. I'm, I'm closing here. I know I've been a while, and uh, you, you've been patiently to 
uh, to listen and, and to hold on. I, at least I hope you have. But I'm saying that we need to be like David sometimes and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Okay. It is, it is too easy. to allow our muscles to grow weak. We do nothing, the weaker we get. We do not push against or allow ourselves to become sore. Okay. Now, soreness is, is uh, something a lot of times that uh, athletes will experience after, you know, uh, whatever the sport is, um, after a tremendous amount of, of exertion and, you know, taking their bodies to the edge of their strength and trying to push past where they previously were okay um many times that causes soreness <laughs> okay um and you know if you're looking for to be stronger in the lord and not experience some discomfort, not experience some times where uh, you're going to be told things you don't want to hear. Because the Bible will tell us things, and, and the Word of God will tell us, and, and the man of God sometimes will tell us things, but we do not want to hear. But if we allow ourselves to be wise, okay, we have to move in the right direction because this word, okay, this strengthen, this retain, this aid uh this taking um i mean <laughs> it is amazing all right how much this word it's not always translated encouraged but this Hebrew word is used many, many, many times in the Old Testament. Of course, it's a Hebrew word, so it would be in uh, the Old Testament. But in the Old Testament here, this word is, is used, uh, it, okay, occurs 290 times in 266 verses. That should tell us something. From Genesis to the end of the Old Testament, it is all through the books of the Bible. I would say that the Lord wants us encouraged. We need to be encouraged, but sometimes it takes us putting on the prayer garment, bowing our face before heaven, 
and grabbing hold of the horns of the altar. And saying, God, whatever it takes. Let's be encouraged. In fact, it's something that you have to be heavily involved in. It just can't come from the outside. It can't just come from activities. It can't just come from a bunch of hype. It's got to come from something deeper within you and deep within God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blessings, your goodness. We pray that you would bless all those that, uh, that have heard this word and those that may listen to this later. I pray, dear God, that they would truly be encouraged. Oh, God, that you, Lord Jesus, would open their eyes, Lord God, and they would see your word and, and find your vessels. And Lord God, begin, Lord Jesus, to know, Lord God, you more intimately. We pray, dear God, that you would work within our hearts in our lives, Lord Jesus, where we may, Lord God, be dis depressed, dismayed, and Lord, and carrying a book of excuses. We pray, Lord Jesus, that somehow, some way, Lord God, that your will would be done within our hearts and lives. And we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you for listening. That concludes Bible study for tonight.